Howdy folks, welcome back to another Auto Spec Renew video. Today we're going to be doing a charging comparison test on my 2015 Model S post and pre-pack replacement. So let's get right into it. I want to give a big thanks to our friends at the CCAN Action Fund for sponsoring this video. If you're looking for your chance to drive off in a brand new electric vehicle and support a nonprofit organization, well, one of the best nonprofits that's fighting for clean energy is running their seventh annual EV raffle, and this year is their biggest one yet. You've got amazing odds to win because for the first time ever, there will be three prize winners, and there's only going to be 10,000 tickets sold, so you've got pretty great odds of winning. The prizes really are stunning. The first prize winner gets picked between one of six different luxury EVs, including a Rivian R1S or R1T, a Porsche Macan EV or the Porsche Taycan, or a Lucid Gravity or a Lucid Air. The second prize winner gets to pick between a Hyundai Ioniq 5 or a Volkswagen ID Buzz. And for the first time ever this year, there will be a third prize winner, which gets to take home a brand new Chevrolet Equinox EV. And even better yet, state and federal taxes are also covered by the organization. The CCAN Action Fund fights for clean energy nationwide, and by supporting them, you could not only win a new EV, but you're also supporting a great cause. So it really is a win-win. To enter, visit www.evraffle.org. Again, that's evraffle.org, or you can visit the link in the description below. Tickets are only $200, so make sure to get yours today. And once again, thanks to the CCAN Action Fund for sponsoring this video. So I'm here at the Supercharger in Troutdale, Oregon. We're gonna go ahead and get plugged in here. But uh, first, you're actually gonna see the before test with the old 70 kilowatt hour pack. And uh, of course, I'm standing here today with the new 100 kilowatt hour pack already swapped in. Uh, but yeah, let's take a look at the first test first. And then uh, I'll come back to you and we'll take a look at this one. All righty. So unfortunately, we lost the audio on some of these before clips. But here we are with the car still equipped with the old 70 kilowatt hour battery. We're going to go ahead and get it plugged into the supercharger here, of course, starting at 10 percent. So we'll go ahead and get plugged in. And I've got my other phone set up with a timer ready to go. Once the contactors close on the car, and it's initiated charging. We'll go ahead and start that 15 minute timer and then we'll let the car continue through its entire charge session and then we'll unplug it exactly when it hits the 15 minute mark. So there you go, timer started. We'll go ahead and let it sit here and charge and let the power ramp up. We'll see where we end up once the charging is complete and then we'll go ahead and hit the road. All right, our charging session is coming to an end here. We've added 15 kilowatt hours. We're down to only 58 kilowatts of power and 36% state of charge. So as you can see, pretty impressively slow charging with the old 70 kilowatt hour pack, as is kind of par for the course for any of really the, the V1 packs from Tesla, both the, the 60, the 70, and the 85. Of course, the 85 is the best of the bunch since it's gonna be a little bit higher voltage, but the current is more or less the same for any of them. But there's our timer done. We'll go ahead and get unplugged and we'll go ahead and get ready to hit the road here and we'll see how far we can make it at 80 miles an hour. Alrighty, we're hitting the freeway here. We'll go ahead and get the speed ramped up. You can see the supercharger is right there just off the freeway. So it's actually a perfect location for doing this kind of testing. And actually there's also an Electrify America right there as well. But anyway, we'll go ahead and get the speed ramped up, set autopilot to 80 miles an hour, and then we should be totally good to go. And we'll continue on with this journey. And uh, once I come close to the halfway point, I'll go ahead and get you guys updated and we'll see just how far we can actually make it in this 15 minute charging session. All right, we're approaching our turnaround point, which is gonna be here at the exit for the Bonneville Dam. Gonna head and hop off here, flip around and go the other way. I did put the supercharger back into our navigation and it's estimating we'll be back there at 9%. I find that it's usually a little bit on the more um, pessimistic side. But yeah, we'll go ahead and flip back around here and hopefully we end up there at about 10%. And uh, yeah, we're at 23. 
almost 23 and a half miles so far. So yeah, total, we're probably looking at, you know, 46, 47 miles, give or take. And here we go, back on the road again. See you guys back at the supercharger. All right, we're coming in hot. We've actually already dipped below 10%. We're at 8% with a targeted arrival of 7%. So actually the opposite of what I expected. Um, in terms of the gesso meter being uh, a bit pessimistic instead it was optimistic. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to kind of consider this to be the end of the test. Really, I should have ended it a few miles back, but we'll say, you know, 41, 42 miles, give or take, um, for the 10% challenge on this thing. So I'm going to go ahead and get it back to the charger here, top it up, and head back to the shop. I won't be swapping the battery out uh, today or probably even tomorrow. Um, but here in a couple days, I'll get the pack swapped out. We'll do this test again with the new pack. I've got high hopes. I'm expecting to see probably at least double uh, the distance that we saw here. So anyway, here's to hoping. All right, so back to present day here. We're sitting here at 10%. We've got our climate control on. I've got my timer set up, ready to go. This is actually my very first time supercharging with this pack ever, so I'm really curious to see what kind of speeds we're actually going to get. Well, let's go ahead and get plugged in here. And as soon as contactors close and we start charging, I'll go ahead and hit start on our timer. And I hear contactors. We'll hit start. It's starting to ramp up now. Go ahead and close the window up here. But yeah, we're going to keep climate control on for the whole test, of course. And uh, we'll sit here and charge for our 15 minutes, and then we'll hit the freeway at 80 miles an hour and see how far we go. Still ramping up. We'll see what we get for peak speeds here. 110, 120. My old pack wouldn't ever hit 120, even in the most, um, even in the best of conditions. So let's see, are we going to keep ramping up here? It's settling at 128 for now. Oh, 129. I did uh, try to precondition this, but my temperatures are a little bit colder now than we were with the old pack. So that could potentially be what's going on here. We might be just a touch on the cold side. The car didn't try to precondition. Um, it was warm enough that it didn't, didn't want to heat, and it didn't didn't fully hit its passive target there. But it's coming up there pretty close now. We're still slowly coming up. Alrighty, I'll update you guys if we hit a hit a higher peak speed here. I'll keep an eye on it, and uh, we'll see where we end up. Alrighty, we just hit our halfway point, just over seven and a half minutes there. We didn't hit higher than 132 kilowatts. Wow, my screen is dusty. Uh, yeah, we didn't hit higher than 132, uh, but yeah, we're still holding over 120. We've added 15 kilowatt hours, which is as much as we added in our entire charging session last time, and we're only just a little over halfway through. So we're looking pretty good to add maybe nearly double the amount of capacity if our uh, if our charging rate stays pretty steady here. If we stay over 120, we might actually get pretty close to double. Um, so yeah, that's pretty sweet. So one of our biggest limitations for charging speed on this car, now that we have this updated pack in, this pack is actually capable of much higher speeds than what we're seeing here. But the limitation now is the hardware on the car, and that's the charge port and the high voltage junction box and the cabling that goes along with that. I might want to look into exploring additional options to maybe upgrade that stuff, but that might be pretty extreme because I think I'd have to retrofit the junction box. I'd have to go to Gen 3 onboard charger. Of course, the the updated... I don't know if the charge port is really that much different. Um, and I would probably have to go to the rapid splitter system for the battery pack. Um, which would also involve changing the front junction box, the cabling that goes from the rear to the front of the car, 
in other words, it would be a major, major ordeal and a significant amount of cost uh, to be able to do that. So, I don't know. We'll see um, if uh, if that might be something that I'd want to look into. But so far, I'm pretty thrilled with this. I mean, we're charging way, way faster than my previous pack ever would. I mean, before, I would have been lucky to hit, you know, a little over 100 kilowatts, maybe, for maybe a handful of seconds. Um, and that's only even under the most ideal conditions. A lot of the time, it wouldn't even hit 100, um, especially in colder weather or anything. And yeah, as you saw in the last test, uh, of course, we were only go able to go just a little over 40 miles um, on the test. So basically like 30 minutes of charging for every hour of driving. And that's assuming you're just charging in the bottom end at you know, the 15 minute charge sessions, because it just gets slower and slower the deeper you go. Um, yeah, right now we're, we've still got three minutes left on this charge session. I'm up 23 kilowatt hours and we're still pulling 120 kilowatts. Uh, and yeah, 37% state of charge. So I'm pretty thrilled with this result so far. Um, so yeah, we'll just keep on trucking along here. Once my timer goes off, I'll go ahead and get the car unplugged and we'll hit the road. All right, our timer is about to run out here. We've added 29 kilowatt hours, so almost dead nuts on double the amount of capacity. We're just one kilowatt hour short. Well, let's go ahead and hit the road here and see how far we can get. I guess in theory, it should be basically double. Alrighty, we're hitting the on-ramp here. We'll go ahead and bring her up to 80, hit autopilot, and we will just cruise along from here. All right, this was our turnaround point last time here at Bonneville Dam, but we're still going strong. We've got 33%, so what, we've used 11% so far, I guess. And, uh, we started with 44, so we've got 17% each way basically to play with until we hit 10%. So we're doing uh, we're doing pretty good. And uh, yeah, just keep on keeping on. And I'll let you guys know when we get to our halfway turnaround, wherever that may be. All right, we've reached our halfway turnaround point at Viento State Park. We traveled just a little over 39 miles so far. And uh, we'll get turned around here and start heading back the other way. Alrighty, we're officially down to 10%. And we've traveled 76 miles. So uh, last time on the initial test, I didn't actually turn on the camera until we hit 8%. And we were at, I think, 43 point something miles. So realistically, by the time we hit 10%, probably more like 40 or 41 miles. I should have paid a little bit more attention that time around but yeah nearly double the distance um there are a couple of things here that were not quite as ideal as last time for one we're a good 10 degrees cooler out uh today maybe even a little bit more than that and our battery temperature when we started wasn't quite as ideal but uh of course after a supercharging session and then driving at 80 miles an hour for the better part of an hour uh we're up pretty high in temperature so i'm actually going to plug in here back at the supercharger and see if we get some increased speeds um, from uh, from this little session here. We're down to 9% now, so we'll be a little bit lower than 10%, but I'm curious to see if we get uh, increased speeds over last time uh, when I plug this in, just because our cell temperatures are a little bit higher. So anyway, yeah, pretty, pretty satisfactory result, nearly double the distance. Um, Let's see if it charges even faster with the pack heated up a bit more. Alrighty, so I didn't hit any uh, any higher peak speeds than what we saw before. So, yeah, I guess, like I said, our really big limitation is basically just the hardware on the car in terms of the charge port and, and all that stuff. Um, so, yeah, that's pretty much it for this one. Pretty, uh, pretty good result there. I'm pretty happy with uh, with almost double the distance. Um, our efficiency coming back was a little bit lower, um, which also played a little bit of a role, I suppose. It's kind of expected for it to be a bit lower with the extra weight of the pack, 
probably 300-ish pounds, give or take. Um, but yeah, I'm not sure what else could have been at play besides exterior temperature, I suppose. Uh, since it was cooler today, the air is denser, so you've got to push push more air out of the way, so that makes a difference. But yeah, we were probably about five or six percent off on the efficiency. So anyway, yeah, that'll do it for this one. And uh, yeah, pretty happy with it. Thanks for watching. <laughs>